Thank you. Good. Okay, seven o'clock. I'm going to call the select board meeting of Tuesday, June 26th, to order. First item on the agenda is approval of the agenda. Second. Moved and seconded. I believe we have one addition. Yes, please. I'd like to add um, painting of the faces of the town clock to the agenda as item 8F. Item 8F. You may have to remind me when we get to E. <coughs> um, any other amendments? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the amended agenda, signify by saying aye. 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 Those aye. Are Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> yes, Nick is joining us from Virginia. Um, next is approval of the minutes. I'll move. I'll second. Moved and seconded. Are there any changes to the minutes as drafted? Wow, there's two, minutes in, two meetings in a row that the minutes haven't had any amendments. So all in favor of approving the minutes for June 12th as drafted signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Next is citizen comments. Is there anyone here for something that is not on the warned agenda? Nance? This is real quick, but I think that we often just kind of take things for granted and I wanted to sh give a shout out to some of our employees in town that have been above and beyond terrific in all the things that we've been doing downtown. Um, starting with Kathleen, who has been incredibly helpful with the Wi-Fi piece. Jen Murray, who helped us get through some permitting things and gave some great suggestions. Jackie, who's helped us uh, figure out how to get through the whole grant process. Um, Lily, who is our gardener, who helped us out a lot there. Bill Kernan, who has been amazing every single thing we've asked, and he's gone above and beyond. And then, of course, Jim, um, working with Jim. And it's just, you know, these are all professionals, and I think we really need to keep that in mind, that they know what they're doing, and they're really here to help. and. Um, we are very happy that they've been around to help us. So that's all. And, and a thanks to the Rotary for helping to paint downtown too. So thank you. All right, nice shout out. Okay, Karen, uh, next year up for an update on the Vermont gas line inspection. Yes. So, um, for, let me just uh, okay. preface this yes. a little bit. I asked Vermont Gas to come and give everyone an update uh, because the last time that they were doing the line inspection, we had the blowtorch that sounded like a jet engine and, and uh, disturbed a number of people. They shut that down, went back to the uh, options that were available, found some new options, and uh, are going to present that so everyone is aware of, of um, how they're inspecting the line in the new process Correct. so that we don't have that. Correct. So um, I'm Karen Kotecki and the right-of-way manager for Vermont Gas and with me is Adam Giro who is the project manager for the inline inspection and basically the inspection is the same however uh, the process is the same however the duration will be much longer because the uh, smart tools will go uh, much slower um, because there will be no flare. Um, so there will be uh, far less disruption. In fact, there will be no disruption uh, whatsoever. Um, we're beginning July 9th. Um, setup is the week before, yes, I believe. Be, yeah, next Monday. Yep. Setup will start. At the Middlebury Gate Station and also in Colchester at our Colchester Gate Station. And the first week, uh, there'll be two uh, what they call uh, cleaning uh, pigs, if you will. Um, pipeline inspection gauges that will be put through uh, one at a time and those will be very slow I think is it one mile an hour or less than that yeah pro approximately one mile an hour along the 41 miles um, and then once those go through um, and that's standard practice and then once that goes through they'll put in the smart tools uh, one at a time that will go through much uh, slower actually um, and the process is expected to take about three to four weeks 
um, we've notifying and we're in the process of notifying um, all of the municipalities, the law enforcement, all of the landowners along the pipeline. Um, uh, last week, uh, my colleague Dave Walker and I met with uh, the folks that and the uh, businesses and the residents around the Middlebury Gate Station, and the, we talked face to face uh, with those folks that were at home and those that weren't. We left letters um, in their doors to let them know um, about the new and improved uh, ILI process, and we left our names um, and contact information if they had any questions. Um, we um, have also um, met with the Department of Public Service and the PUC as well and given them updates. Yeah, so the really big difference is before um, with the faster tool and the, and the flare running, <clears throat> we could get the process done in about 10 to 12 hours, so it was during working hours. The difference here is because it's gonna take us um, 40 hours with the, with the cleaning tools and up to approximately 100 hours per run with the smart tools, we're gonna be running around the clock. So. The only activity that's going to be done is is having trackers who track the um, ILI tools as they're going down. Every mile or so, they set an above ground marker, and they'll be so they'll be pulling up on the side of the road with their trucks. Um, they'll set the box over exactly over the pipe, and as the tool goes by, it triggers the marker, the above ground marker, and they can pick it up and go to the next site. That's the same as with the last inline inspection, except the difference is when it was moving at four miles an hour, it was about every 15 minutes that they were hitting these above ground marker locations. Now moving at a half a mile an hour, it's gonna be two to three hours between markers. And it's also 24 seven. Correct. And so that's why we've notified, there's none in Middlebury, the only one that's closest to Middlebury um, is uh, near the Belden Road uh, residence and we've uh, talked to her face to face so she would know if she saw a truck to a, it's a pickup truck and there's no actual physical activity other than a, a pickup truck that would get out and and pick up the device once the the uh, smart tool went through and then go to the next spot um, but we're notifying all landowners and all of those markers are roadside so that you know they don't have to physically they won't have to walk like a mile down the corridor okay i'm just looking to see if we had any questions yes that you i didn't hit i on. did print those out too so adam can answer some of those a couple of them are um actually the same question um what technology is vgs using to propel the pig through the pipe so the the pig is actually propelled with right in the natural gas stream so we, we put it in and that's the same as the other pro the previous process put it in and it's um they've got a rubber seal that seals off and the gas pressure behind pushes the pig through and there's still gas pressure in front so that everybody downstream is still getting the the gas so there's no disruption of service but it, it goes right in the natural gas stream um why did we not use it before so it's the it's the same process it's just um before we were trying to get it done in daylight hours um so that we didn't have these overnight disturbances not disturbances but activity and the first one is industry best practice and that's what the way they basically do it across the country and that's the way we did it um however <coughs> not realizing the impact that the flare was going to have we stopped as soon as we understood what was happening in the community, we did stop. Um, and we sought out this other way of doing it, this company that does it this way, and thought, even though it's gonna take a lot longer, it's worth it, so. Yep. Um, how will the pig be pushed through the pipeline um, via some other gas or propellant instead of the gas already in the pipe? And that was the same question as number yep. one. Uh, yep. Uh, what does the new pipeline need more? Well, why does the new pipeline need more cleaning pigs to be run through it before the inspection pigs make the <coughs> pass? Um, so that's the the original contractor that came up. They did their cleaning run. Um, this is a new contractor, and basically they just want to make sure the the cleaning pigs are essentially the same size and shape as the um, the tool, the the smart tool that they're going to run. The smart tools are very expensive. They don't want them to get hung up in the pipeline, so they run these um, pigs through first to make sure that. Um, it's passable with their pigs. So that's why it's just kind of a standard practice. They want to make sure that they're not putting their expensive tools into a pipeline where they might get hung up and have more issues. Okay. So it's not really cleaning? It uh, they, I mean, it's, they've got um, some bristles on the side, so it is um, like scraping the inside of the pipe to make sure that it's perfectly clean so that the tool <coughs> can get good readings. Okay. So they do clean, but it's kind of a, a dual purpose. Okay. Okay. So those those ones were run when the when the flare was running. Are there any other questions? Just a minor one related to the flare. So, if you had more off takers, would you expect that there wouldn't be so much flare? Uh, the first time around. Yeah. You first, mean? Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's the the, the uh, pig runs in the in the flow of the gas stream. So the more off takers you have, the faster the gas is flowing. Okay. I just wanted to be clear, and I think that you were very clear in your responses to the questions. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Kathleen, have I sent you the um, the FAQ? <coughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, I have. Okay, yeah, I wasn't sure. I'll post it on the website. I couldn't remember. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, Karen and Andy. I brought with me Andy Paluch from Come Alive Hello. Outside. And what we're talking about tonight is you guys received the permit application that the BMP filled out for the block party that we're hoping to have on August 15th. Part of that that we're hoping to incorporate this year is uh, the Green Streets Challenge, which I think I've talked to a few of you about already, which is where we come in and lay sod down and create like a public park in the middle of Main Street. Kind of exciting and um, something different does obviously present a few challenges as well so we knew you'd have questions so andy's here to sort of tell you a little bit more about it and um, how they've addressed those challenges in Roland. thank you yeah. so um so i'm the executive director for come alive outside and so we do we'll do 15 green streets uh, this year across north america and a lot of those happen up in ontario so we'll do 10 up there and then uh, we'll do one in rutland and a few more uh, here in the states and so really the idea of the event um, is kind of to do something wacky enough that it catches everybody's attention and creates an opportunity to really have a conversation as a community about the importance of spending time outside, talking about what our lives look like because we're not doing that and we're all plugged in all the time. And so, um, so we've been doing these for about six years, or the first, uh, the first folks who did it was about six years ago, and then we've kind of spread the program to other communities based on how they did it. And so, um, so I feel like we're getting it pretty fine-tuned in terms of getting the sod down and back up. And I was just walking. Um, I think the idea is to kind of do it on the bridge of Main Street as it's coming in here. And so, um, so I took a look at it over there, and I think there's a couple things to keep in mind. But, um, but we've done a lot of them there. In, in Rutland, we did it on Center Street uh, last year during um, a 5K race that was there. And so usually like 5,000 to 7,000 square feet of sod is about what you can put down in a couple hours and then get back up uh, afterwards. So that um, if it goes much over that, we've done one once it was nine to 10,000 and then you just, it's just a lot of effort to get it down and back up. But the idea is to create a temporary play space um, that's really memorable and awesome for the day and then all that sod gets donated to a location afterwards. So it sounds like here um, could go to Habitat, it could also go to one school of the schools. Um, so that's awesome and that's kind of a, a lot of times it's a great way to draw attention to whatever that project is that's happening to and so that folks um, you kind of capture attention in bringing a park to them right in the middle of the street and then you can talk about this is all going to um, a great project in town afterwards and so um, so I know I don't know the details of, of when everything is going down and up but so the, the couple things I'll say that that um, important to look at over here we do it a couple different ways sometimes we'll put down landscape fabric on the road um, so that we do in downtown Toronto where it's really quick, has to go down and up quickly and the roads have to be kind of perfect afterwards. So if we can't have a street sweeper come in, then it's best to put down landscape fabric and so you put it over that and then when the sod comes up, you kind of roll that back up and the street's ready to go. Um, I don't know what the best option will be here. If it's possible to have the street sweepers come in afterwards, that's a really easy way to do that. The one thing that we would keep in mind with this one, uh, there's four, uh, of storm sewer drains that are on that bridge there and so if we don't put down landscape fabric we would just put kind of a little small check dam around those um, just with straw bales and some and some filter fabric over it um, and I, I was trying to see how those drain I don't know if they go right down into the river or what happens there but um, it would just wouldn't want to get too much sediment going down through those I'm not sure how, how they work but um, that's kind of an easy solution to that so if um, if we could have street sweepers involved to clean it up, that's awesome. It's definitely cheaper that way, and then we don't need to, to get somebody to donate the, the fabric or to buy that. So um, 
but I'm not sure what the options are there. Exactly. So I had talked to Bill Kernan at DPW, and he did say that he thought street sweeping the next morning would be a possibility um, for the town members. Yeah, and it's not like it's too messy afterwards, but you definitely want to do something, you know, you, you would notice it afterwards when it comes up, so. And so basically for the block party element of this, it's from 5 to 8 p.m., just like last year. Uh, we have uh, bringing in a stage and a band and games. We've got Middlebury Indoor Tennis that wants to come and set up sort of a free tennis demonstration. Um, we want to bring in some food and, you know, do some promotion with the businesses and try to encourage shopping. So very similar from a block party perspective as last year's block party, which was very successful and people really liked it. Um, and I've had a number of merchants ask me if it was going to happen again this year. So I know that's something that they're looking forward to. And then this is just an, another element to it. And again, we were sort of thinking this might be the right time. I know it is a little bit chaotic downtown at the <clears> moment, but, um, but we also could use that sort of excitement to bring some folks down here, I think, and just have it really serve as, as a draw and something new and different. So that's the thinking. At the same time, we do understand that it poses some inconveniences from a traffic standpoint and um, you know, bus service and safety fire and safety you know uh we've got a whole a whole lot of things i know i think kathleen probably forwarded you chief hanley's concerns about traffic as well so just something to keep in mind as you're deciding this so what are your questions about this a couple of them yeah so what area are you looking just for the main street or the merchants were also so from a sod perspective we're looking at from the intersection of merchants road down to i think before um, right before the mill street bakery lane sort of okay. offshoots um from a block party perspective one of the things that has come up and it's uh, you know again it's sort of if you guys want to do it we'll do it and if not that's okay too um is the idea of closing merchants road during the block party and maybe doing some sort of remote control car racing or some other sort of event that happens on that stretch. But um, that's one of the ones that I could take your leave it, to be honest with you. So um, if that poses too many inconveniences, then we can drop that part. And you'll, you'll leave the sod for a couple hours, three hours? Or how long? Yeah, so it would be there for the duration of the block party. And then as soon as Which the party, 5 to 8 5 to p.m., eight. yeah. And how long does it take to put the sod down and to take it off afterwards? That requires some time, right? Yeah, two hours is safe. Um, is it two hours before and two yeah, hours Yeah, two hours after? before and two hours after. Oh, okay, um, so that makes it seven hours total. Yeah. Yeah, so in my it. permit application, I had put in noon to 10, but I think we can actually, um, you know, back it up in the afternoon just a bit. Okay. Um, to, so it would be two, basically two to two. <coughs> right, yeah. Um, why are you doing it on a weekday? Mm hmm um, well, so the block party last year was on a Wednesday yeah, I know, afternoon. I know, I realized that. And the and it was really successful. And the merchants were all open. And we um, feel like the the weekdays are actually when they need the most amount of help from a shopping perspective. Um, the weekends, Saturdays are generally fairly busy. Sundays present other challenges with businesses not being open. Um, and so this leads us back into a movie that night. So that's why we chose a Wednesday. I mean, I'm just wondering, I mean, it's, it's possible to do it on a Sunday and have the businesses open. And, yep. and it would seem to me it would be less of a burden for the fire department and the police and the bus. I mean, they're, they're um, uh, if you had something like that, I, I mean, I, I realize that, you know, just because it was on a Wednesday the first time does not sure. set it in stone. And I. Yep. My own sense, I would prefer that. It would seem to me that it would be an opportunity for businesses to stay open, or open at that time, and, and uh, uh, there might be more people free because they wouldn't be working. And sure. um, I mean, I, I, it concerns me that you know that's sort of a heavy travel time of day, mm -hmm. uh, and um, I. You know, I, I watched the, the traffic going by there, and I, I just wondered why that couldn't be considered. Um, and uh, I, mean, I like the idea of nothing. I mean, that, you know, it seems to me it's good for the community to have these opportunities, but um, 
don't know, I'm not partial to Wednesday if, if it could be, say, on a Sunday, uh, Sunday, after, Sunday afternoon, and, and uh, uh, whether you might, in fact, get a better turnout. It's possible. I, I would just say I do hesitate sometimes with weekend things during the summer. Um, because I think that there are a lot of choices. We're sort of um, an embarrassment of riches sometimes in Middlebury on the weekends or in this area. So um, that was sort of my idea too, was just the idea that there isn't that much going on during the week mm -hmm. versus the weekends. So, but I understand your concerns. I mean, people are working. Yep. Um, and you have trucks, <coughs> you have the problem with trucks and I, I you know, uh, it's hard enough for the trucks negotiating our, you know, our rather short spaces, trying to turn and so on. Um, mm -hmm. Can you clarify the time frame? Uh, you would close at two, so lay two the to sod, 10 p.m. And when would the party kick off? Five. At five. So it's actually after hours party. <laughs> yeah. Kind of. Five to eight would be the yeah. party. So the stores are already going to be open later. So we're basically doing midnight stroll again yeah. from five to eight. And you, um, you had mentioned um, cutting it right at bakery, just beyond bakery lane. So cars that the Can residents and businesses could access yeah. this. Which is what we lot. did last time as well. So we just, we ended the block party right at those. Yeah. Because last time we did this, the road was already closed. Yeah. So we didn't have to do this piece of it where we were trying to figure out how we're going to make it work because the, we were doing it during the temporary bridge install. So, um, you know, it's one of those things. I, I do also, I'm kind of looking at it like it's a little bit of a dress rehearsal because at some point, you know, our road is going to be closed for 10 weeks. Um, in 2020 um, during weekdays the whole time. So, um, so it's definitely non, you know, not something that we're not going to have to deal with at some point. Yeah. And Merchant's Row, you said you could take it or leave it, but it's one way. So if you, sh if you close it here, right. then, you, then you close access to Merchant's Row. So right, you might exactly. as well plan. Yeah. So people can come. Well, so people, if we closed it at Merchants at the intersection of Merchants Road, people could still come down and up. Yep. What? Come down, down from the, there. Come down the hill from the from the uh, congregational church. Office yeah. And, and take a and left. Make a left hand turn there. Right. Oh, you're gonna. It would just be. Oh, okay. It so would just be closed yes. to two Merchants oh, Road. Oh, so you're not gonna close yes. no, sir. Okay. Yes. okay. So, if, so if if we didn't do the remote control car piece, which I think again, like that takes. I think maybe that's a little bit down the road if we wanted to explore that idea. If we wanted to just do the only place where the sod would go would be from the edge of the Merchants Row intersection, right where it was closed last year for the construction, to the Mill Street Bakery Lane intersection. Just before it. Yeah. Just, just north before. of it. Yeah. So the area, the, the hump in front of National Bank, all that would still be open? Yes. Oh, okay. So, that so if that's be, the case, I think it would make sense to keep Merchants, Merchants Row, Row open yeah. because people can come down the hill. Yeah. If you're not going to keep Merchants Row open, then you really can't have anyone come down from, At all. Right. from above the post office because where are they going to go? Right. So. Yeah, I thought that whole hill was closed. Oh, no. Yeah, no, I think it makes sense to do it for this year from Merchants Row intersection to Bakery Lane. So uh, Chief Shaw is here. He may have some unique perspectives to add. I think they've answered my question. I thought we were going to continue it up the street. My concern is that access to that hydrant down Triangle Park. And it sounds like we work around that. And I think for next year, I think Victor's suggestion about doing it on Sunday makes more sense. Okay. Uh, traffic disruption is never good on a weekday, I think. Yeah. I don't know. The, like the midnights, the, yeah, I kind of like it. The, I like actually having activity mm -hmm. because it's an evening party. Um, I think by shifting it beyond the noon rush, you're only going to impact one. But if you're closing at two, the whole street you're has gonna, an impact, right? Yeah, you have some impact. 
I don't know, nothing ventured, nothing gained is part of my so thought on the, on the Wednesday because the weekend party, you know, I met a lot of people were at camp this time of year. I'm not sure, you know, they're traveling there. I'm not, I'm not sure that it serves as we, unless we can get all the stores to go get open because we've had that challenge mm -hmm. getting them to, to, uh, to open. Well, I love the event for the same reason. You know, I think that you're, you're experimenting again with uh, late night shopping. And I love the addition of the green space. And I know it's not our first time with Come Alive outside, so we'll be continuing to brand that messaging, which I love that messaging. So I think it's going to be a fantastic opportunity. And I think you've, you've addressed the concerns about traffic. Um, so Actor is here, too. And I think you know I've talked to Bill, and he, we fully support he supports it. The event, we would revert back to the schedule that we used when we operated off of South Pleasant Street. The only thing we would be asking is for a temporary stop just during the event at either the Monument or at Town Hall Theater. Probably Town Hall Theater would make more sense mm -hmm. uh, just for that two to seven period when we operate. But uh, fully endorse the event. Hope we can bring a lot of people downtown for it. Thank you. <coughs> And we did see great success with Fooderoo on a yes. Sunday afternoon. So we this know that works too. And, yes. it, and it's a different event. You yeah. know? So, um, so let's, let's go for this one too. And I like that it piggybacks an evening movie that you yes. also will be having. Okay. Cost of it? Is it uh, the cost uh, like of putting all the green down? How is that absorbed? Yeah. So. Um, Saratoga Sod Farms in Saratoga donates all the sod for here and for Rutland. So, um, so they they just they are on board with the mission and love to do that. So, um, so they'll donate the sod, and then Carpenter and Costin as a landscape company that will help. They'll have a crew here to help lay the sod, and then we'll get volunteers to help with that too. But um, it's really helpful to have folks who've laid sod before, and it kind of helps keep that all going quickly. So there really is no cost to the sod at all. The only thing that would be a cost is the landscape fabric, but it sounds like we're okay to, to sweep the street. So um, if we can do that, there's, it's all, all donation of material and, and the labor to do it. And it's gonna look awesome. I was just <laughs> over there looking at like that, um, I think going across the bridge, looking into town, that really is, um, that's kind of a big part of it is to create something really striking that everybody's like, whoa. This is awesome and different, and then gets everybody talking. So it's it's like a ideal spot to do it there. Going and I was going to say too, Rutland did it for the first time last year, and they're yeah. doing it again this yeah. year. So it was obviously something that everybody really liked. Everybody that's done it has done it again. Yeah. So that's a good that's a good thing. Yeah. Curious, did neighbors together? What's review? that? Did neighbors together review this and yes. give comment on it? Yes. So it's this is coming to you from not my BMP hat, my neighbors together hat. <laughs> okay. So um, the whole summer series this year is really being brought to you by neighbors together. So BMP sort of kicked that off because we didn't have the money to to do it as a town. So we sort of took the reins um, in advance. And then um, once that funding came through, we've moved everything over to neighbors together. So that's a neighbors together event at this point. So I'm in favor of giving it a try on Wednesday this year and seeing the impact to traffic and, um, you know, participation downtown. I mean, we did it last year on a Wednesday, and I thought it was great. We had a lot of people downtown, and um, so I would be in favor of trying it on a Wednesday and see, see what happens. Yeah, okay. I mean, maybe we decide that if we want to do it next year, it has to be at a different time, but... Um, well, I think we can definitely keep track of the feedback that we're getting, um, you know, pro and con, and um, just be aware of that um, from an observation standpoint as we let people know about this and anything that we hear back, we can sort of assemble that for, um, for next year when we, if we decide that we want to do this again, we can um, use that to really influence our decision and uh, come back to you guys. And I, I take it, I mean, there are going to be opportunities for all sorts of activities, particularly children on, on the facade, is that mm -hmm. right? So you have, you'll bring in all sorts of yeah. things. Yeah, games and yeah, 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 all kinds of stuff. So we really want to make it a really fun atmosphere downtown and, a, and 
um, just create more of a connection with our community members and their downtown. Um, and I think that that's really something that we could all use right now. So might even have leftover ice cream. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, a motion. Pleasure of the board. Um, I uh, move that we approve the request to close Main Street from Merchants Road to Bakery Lane on Wednesday, August 15th, from noon until two, two from two, two until 10 for the block party. Thank you. I'll second. Okay. Moved and seconded. Did, did you have any questions, Nick? No, I, I actually, uh, I like it. So. Okay. Definitely worth going. I like the creativity of the product. I like the idea of building a community downtown. So I don't see any reason to object to it. I'm going to be here. Okay, same. Um, any comments before we vote? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. And. Uh, we have a second motion if we're amenable to endorsing it. I'll move that we endorse um, Middlebury's participation in the Come Alive Outside Green Street Challenge um, and approve laying down the sod. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Thank you Thank so much. You. Thanks, everybody. Um, Karen, if you need some fabric, I might be able to help you. Excellent. Thank Keep you. Me in mind. I'll confirm. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Eric and Nancy. This is a Neighbors Together part two. Um, in 2016, when we had the forums, there were hundreds of ideas that came forward, and one of them was to promote the possibility of, or float the idea, of having a few tax-free holidays for the entire Middlebury community during the um, Rail and Bridge project during the 20 during the 10-week uh, closing. So Eric has taken this on in his f way of <laughs> doing things as thoroughly as anyone. So I turn it over to Eric. Thanks, Nancy. Earlier this year, when Neighbors Together began meeting again. Uh, I started doing some research on this topic, uh, looking at tax holidays that have been held in Vermont earlier. There were several during the time Jim Douglas was governor. Looking at tax holidays in other states, about half the states with the sales tax have a regular tax holiday of one sort or another, and some of the research by economists on tax holidays. And the conclusion of, of uh, this analysis was that uh, sales and other tax holidays can be quite successful if they are of short duration and are very widely publicized before they happen. Uh, we did some research with uh, merchants in the community and several of them said that uh, they re still remembered the sales tax holidays, which were either one or two days, back in 2009, 2010, and several merchants said they had their highest sales of the year uh, on the days of those holidays, and they weren't during the Christmas season by any means. I think one was in the spring and one was in the fall. So thinking about all this material, we tried to come up with a proposal which we'd like to put together uh, and uh, discuss with people in the community over the next several months and then present to the uh, legislature as a bill uh, when they come back in, in January. Uh, specifically, what we'd be asking the legislature to do is include an amendment in their miscellaneous tax bill that would be, uh, that would be approved likely in May of 2019. Uh, to waive the sales tax, the rooms and meals tax, just those two, the sales tax and the rooms and meals tax for four four-day periods during the time of the intense construction in the summer of 2020. So these tax holidays would be approximately every third week during June, July, and August of 2020. What Neighbors Together would do is work with businesses in town and the lodging industry in particular and try and market Middlebury, things that are going on in Middlebury during those four days. Our, our, our objective in all of this is to provide incentives for people to shop, stay, and dine in Middlebury during the construction period. 
and the tax holidays would be timed, would be scheduled to go along with other events that would attract people downtown, such as the film festival, the new filmmakers festival that's held in August every year. There's some other summer events. There's the big bike race, the Grand Fondo. That attracts a lot of people to town. Uh, if Woodstock Cidery does anything, that's certainly an event that would attract a lot of people to town. One idea we've also had, speaking of Woodstock Cidery, would be to work with some of the lodging establishments in the Chamber of Commerce to put together, a, with the adult beverage industry, a wine and beer tasting weekend uh, that people from out of state might want to come and stay in Middlebury and sample what is an increasingly growing business in Addison County. So there would be a lot of publicity about all this. Um, and Neighbors Together would take care of, 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 of doing the marketing uh, along, with, along with the business community. Uh, I put together an estimate of the fiscal impact, which is somewhere between four hundred and five hundred thousand dollars and $500,000. That's based on extrapolating from sales tax, rooms and meals tax collections in the, in the last three years and uh, seeing what a total of 16 days of tax holiday would, would have as an impact in 2020. The, uh, if the legislature were to endorse the proposal, uh, we would then come back and ask the town to do whatever would have to be done through the regular processes to waive the three local option taxes, the 1% add-ons to the sales rooms and meals tax during the same period. We don't know whether that can be done by the board, would be a town meeting matter, or would require a vote of the, uh, of the voters. Uh, we'll, we'll leave that one up to you. So that's, that's basically a summary of the proposal. What we're asking for today is for the board to endorse the concept that we're talking about, the idea of periodic tax holidays during the summer 2020 construction season, and endorse the efforts of neighbors together to work with the business community and other stakeholders in Middlebury to get this into the form of a proposal that could be presented to the legislature when they come back in January. And this tax already applies to the all of Middlebury? It would apply to all of Middlebury, right. It would not be, in our initial discussion, we talked at one point of possibly limiting it to downtown improvement district. We, th we didn't want to do that for two reasons. First of all, we didn't want to have a situation where there'd be borders within the town, where one merchant that's on one side of the border is, has to charge more than someone who's right on the other side of the border. But the more important reason is that we want to emphasize Middlebury as a whole during the summer 2020 construction period. It's not just downtown, the most heavily impacted thing area, but we want to do something in terms of economic development for the whole town. Many of the lodging establishments are outside the DI the DIB district, for example. So we want to encourage economic activity in the entire town, not just in the, in the immediate downtown area. Questions? Thoughts? <coughs> you are thorough. <laughs> and, and I'm curious what you said about the experience for businesses the last, last time there was a holiday. Mm -hmm. My impulse was really to say, ah, oh, this is just going to be too hard for the local and state government to bear, you know, like this loss of revenue at a time when we're just wringing our hands so, you know, for every penny, you know, that it's just, is it the right time, you know, to be making that request? So I'm still struggling with that, even though I can see yes. what you've put I, before I, us. I will have a number of responses to that, because I suspect that's a concern that would be raised by many people mm -hmm. in Montpelier. Uh, first of all, uh, the economists have projected that the state is going to be collecting more revenue than was budgeted for in the current fiscal year that's coming close to an end in next year as well. Uh, so, I mean, one of the whole matters of the controversy between the legislature and the governor recently was what to do with unanticipated revenue. So, so that's one point. A second point is that uh, what's going to be happening here in Middlebury in 2020 is going to have a very serious impact on some of the businesses. And there are some businesses for whom the difference of not having tax on four weekends of the year might make the difference between their survival over the longer term and not. And I think something to, tell, to say to the legislatures is this is an economic development incentive that we want to do to make sure that Middlebury is a strong and viable community after the bridge project is done. 
My third response has to do with something that you may have seen some news coverage of. The last legislature, earlier this year, passed a proposal that provides the state provides incentives of five to ten thousand dollars for out-of-staters who want to move to Vermont and work remotely from their homes. And there was a good amount of national media coverage of this program. It was covered in the Boston Globe, in the New York Times, in, uh, on CNBC network, and there were several hundred thousand dollars appropriated for it over a three-year period, and the take-up for it was much higher than expected in the first year, and if just a few of these people end up staying in Vermont long-term, that will be a long-term benefit to the state's coffers. And that's the way I, I think of this. It may be a short-term hit. It will be a short-term hit, obviously. But if it improves the economic climate in Middlebury beyond the period of just the construction, then it could lead to increased revenue from these taxes, sales, rooms, and meals over the longer term. Now, long ago, about 100 years ago, Supreme Court Justice Louis Brandeis said that the states are laboratories of democracy. And I think this is a good example of trying something to provide incentives for people to shop, dine, and stay in Middlebury with the hope that it will lead to a stronger Middlebury and a stronger economy, not just in 2020, but for many years afterward. And I guess to your point that the whole state would benefit, not mm -hmm. just Middlebury. Right. But then, you know, we, we do have other towns that are going to be watching this. So then, you know, well, what about us? You know, so. Uh, I, I mean, I would say if there is another town that is adversely affected to the extent that mm -hmm. Middlebury would be in 2020, I would certainly be amenable to doing the same sort of thing. I think, you know, if there are other particularly what I'd call regional center towns, towns mm -hmm. that are the, the shopping areas, and other things than you know, lodging centers and so forth for a region of say you know, 10 or 20 miles around them. If there's another one that's gonna be affected by something like this, I don't know if there's any, any other, if VTrans has any other programs, uh, proposals that are gonna shut off traffic in the core of a town for 10 weeks elsewhere in the state. But if there were, I would certainly support a similar program in another state, in another town. I do remember the last sales tax holiday we had. I think it was 2009 or 10. Yeah, it was actually both. I think it was only for one day, I think. It was either it was one Saturday. or two days. Um, my revenue was doubled of what I usually did, so that was a great increase in my sales. My only concern with this is I think we're asking for a lot. When we say four mm -hmm. tax holidays, four times in that period, mm -hmm. I think if you read uh, Fred Bezer's response, I think that's going to be a little bit... Well, I mean, I think, I, I think that, that, that is that, uh, what Fred put in his email is exactly what I think many of the members of the Ways and yeah. Means Committee would say. I mean, they view, they view one of their roles is to protect the state's revenue, and I certainly understand that, where they're coming from. Um, you know, if, if the committee were to decide that three would be better than four in terms of the impact of, of that, I'm, four, yeah. yeah, I'm sure that's something you could live with, but again, it's a great beginning. We, we want, it's, 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 it's to get the discussion going. Yep. It's to get the discussion going. I agree. So I, I'm thinking uh, that we've been looking for ideas like this. Uh, this had come up a little bit earlier, I think, when uh, Neighbors Together was brainstorming. And, mm -hmm. and um, I don't see a reason why we shouldn't endorse those activities that Neighbors Together are doing to try to uh, put a plan in place that drives business activity. And certainly we have enough proof that tax holidays will drive local, localized business wherever that tax holiday is. Um, we've seen Eric, uh, last time I think he came in, he talked to us about uh, a road that needed repair and mm -hmm. wow, that road was repaired right off. So. Uh, I think he has the power of persuasion, <laughs> uh, and I, I would be in favor of endorsing this and letting them run with it and see what we can get. It's going to take legislative activity. We start with four. We may end up with two. We may end up with, with all four. Who knows? We may end up with none, but it, without getting uh, the endorsement to go and lobby our our legislators, 
uh, we won't even get it started. And it's something we'll be going through uh, elections in the beginning of the new biennium, and, and uh, we need to get it started to have it in place for 2020 if it's going to have the effect that we're looking for. And it needs to be early enough that it can be widely advertised. Yeah, it would, it would, we, we would like the legislature to enact this by the time they adjourn in May yep. or June of 2019, which, because uh, it, it overlaps two budget years, fiscal uh, 19 and fiscal 20 for the state, or maybe it's 20 and 21. It's 20 and 21 from the state budget. But we also want plenty of time for particularly things that would be marketed to out-of-state people, for those sorts of things, to be, so they can be put together in the fall of 2019 and then begin to be marketed early in 2020. And I guess, I mean, I was going to just say that, but we also, uh, we want no surprises. We want to make sure everybody's on the same page. Everybody knows what we're thinking. And uh, if there are questions, we just, we really need to work together on this. And so that's why we're coming to you first. Well, this is the ultimate deliberative event for us because it will go on and be talked about from here up through to the state and back down uh, so i i would i would look for a, a motion to at least get it started i'll make a motion if it's okay uh, i'll make a motion to endorse efforts of neighbors together to seek community support and lobby legislative representatives to introduce a bill in 2019 session creating a series of four Middlebury tax holidays in the summer of 2020 to support local businesses during the height of construction of the bridge and rail project. Second. Moved and seconded. Any other questions? Well, Eric, why did the state stop doing tax holidays if they had such benefit? It was, uh, it was a trade-off. Um, the legislature was getting a lot of complaints about clothing being taxed in Vermont when it was not being taxed in some neighboring states that had sales taxes. So what the legislature decided in 2011, I believe it was, was to exempt all clothing from the sales tax. You might remember it used to be clothing up to a certain dollar amount. So it was the legislature's decision to exempt all clothing from the sales tax to encourage people to buy clothes here in Vermont rather than have particularized tax holidays. Any other questions? He'll know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your yeah, it was a information and information. presentation. It was okay, so, so Thank you for your support also. <clears throat> we need to vote on it. Uh, so we have a motion to support uh, <clears throat> lobby and effort. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, Eric uh, and all of neighbors together, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Nick. Are you planning to go to the legislature, yes. Eric? Good. I will spend some time okay. up there next winter talking Great. about this with members. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Dan, another laundry list of projects. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to rattle through current projects. Um, the uh, combined sewer overflow project was a report that Aldridge and Elliott needed to do to get to the US EPA uh, by the end of the month has been reviewed by Bob and me, and that was e sent, electronically <coughs> sent down to them this afternoon. Um, water hydraulic study. The engineer has placed pressure recorders in the system a couple weeks ago, and uh, hydrant flow testing is scheduled for July 5th and probably into 6th, the 6th. I think there's about 12, 13 locations around town that will be flow tested. Uh, water monitoring project, this is for chlorine and fluoride testing at our well sites, or I should say the entry points to the distribution system. Um, there are three buildings being affected. Um, the foundations are complete. Um, some piping is being installed. Next will be framing construction. Um, South Street and Chipman Park. Uh, pavement removal began today. Um, tomorrow and Thursday are storm sewer frames being adjusted and base paving. Friday will be final paving for that project. Um, 
Charles Avenue project, uh, temporary water main uh, is complete. Stormwater work is underway and water main installation follows soon thereafter. Um, Shard Villa Road, bank stabilization. Um, I met with engineers this morning, uh, John Ashley from uh, Dubois and King. We're gonna be putting out the bank stabilization project out to bid very soon. Um, we're gonna to come to the infrastructure committee with two bid alternatives on August 9, um, and requesting board approval on August 14th so we can get the contractor in the stream and get the uh, below stream work done before October 1. So we're trying to hit some of the approval dates by the committee and the board to get that going. Um, Chipman Hill Reservoir, the contractor expects to begin the work the week of July 16th, uh, completion in approximately 30 days. Um, one of the larger projects uh, is, is the uh, police department storage and carport and decommissioning of the old wastewater treatment plant facility. Um, you have a copy in your, in your board packet from Harris and Harris about that project. Um, this morning I met with Judy and Steve Harris and Bill Norse from Engineering Ventures and Chief Hanley. We went through the buildings uh, uh, with some detail, kind of took a look at what, what was going on and how they were built. Um, right now, the present course is to determine, to a greater extent, the reuse of the foundation for those buildings and the masonry walls. Um, fortunately, the wastewater plant control building uh, is a pretty stout building, you know, block walls and brick, brick exterior. Um, and it appears that it, it will be able to uh, raise the roof, if you will, um, to get larger, you know, taller doors in, in that building um, fairly economically. So the consensus this morning was that the reuse is definitely a possibility. And to go and start over with foundation or trying to put a metal or a prefab building on top of that foundation. It has to do with the physics of how those structures can withstand wind and snow uh, loads and things like that, that that could double the time and double the cost. So I think it was pretty clear today that um, the reuse of those, both of those buildings um, as much as possible is probably the most economic way to go. Um, Creek Road visit, I think you have a, a packet, a small letter I believe from Amy in your packet, um, we met with Mike Klein from Vermont River Management and Jaron Borg, he's the regional uh, rivers engineer. Alan May is from VTrans Better Roads Program, uh, myself and Bill Kernan and Amy, of course. Um, on June 7th, uh, we took a driving and walking tour of Creek Road. Um, showed them the, the, the washing sites and other failures um, basically, Mike and Alan were concerned that, that even a 25-foot buffer would not be enough to head off any further erosion of the river into the, into the roadbed. Mike's comment was if the buffer was wider, 200 feet, it might be a good investment. Um, Alan May, uh, it's his, uh, I guess, department or branch that you know, would push grant programs uh, through a review process, and he was quite hesitant on on doing that. He just didn't seem that the committee would support it. Um, so that's where that's at. Um, so maybe square one for what do we do with Creek Road? Um, let's see. As, oh, as, I want to make a comment too as far as... Um, the grant that that program that we we're going to try to proceed with uh, was called the you get it in your packet also the municipal highway and stormwater mitigate mitigation grant program. Um, last year we talked about um, possibly buying a high efficiency vacuum sweeper street sweeper through this program. Okay. We asked the town voters to approve a 20% match at town meeting. Uh, President Trump and his initiative of Buy America has restricted the FHWA from, from using any funds for any products or machinery that are not made in America. So um, high efficiency sweet sweepers have been pulled from the project. So when we go to 
uh, ask the voters, we'll have to ask the voters next year, town meeting for 100% funding for that piece of equipment because they, none of them are made, are all made in America at this point. So that's that news. Um, let's see, so on to, um, oh, actually, any questions on any of those so far? Well, just to be clear, so I thought we had acquired a new street sweeper. No? We, just, we just requested the voters to fund 20% because okay. the other 80% would have came from this. It was supposed <coughs> to come in, but now you're saying it, it's not because of this restriction. Oh. The, we could have filed the grant application with this grant oh, okay. to fund the other 80%. Mm -hmm. And, and VTrans has pulled <coughs> those items okay. from, from the grant program. Yeah. Um, and, and what about Creek Road? <laughs> I would <coughs> ask that the infrastructure have a chance to talk about Creek Road before. Okay. Because we, we haven't yet had the opportunity. Absorbed it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, next to water and wastewater budgets. Oh, wait a minute. Yep. So did you talk about the bumps on Washington Street? I did not talk about bumps on Washington Street. <coughs> I, you want to update I, us? don't know about the okay. uh, so we have uh, an email from Bill Kernan uh, a response to Laura's inquiry about the bumps um, and <laughs> reporting mine. that people he, are asking <laughs> he met uh, with uh, a contractor on Friday to review four water leak restoration locations and paved areas Court Street Washington Street Gorham Lane and Shannon Street the highway department will be preparing these areas cutting pavement removing fill compacting base and the contractor will be paving I do not have a specific date but hopefully by the end of next week which would be this week uh, so also friday a big day could be could be <laughs> okay 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 water <clears throat> sewer budgets <laughs> okay um So the, both water and wastewater budgets have been reviewed at the Infra Infrastructure Committee. Um, I think Kathleen has a, her annually fantastic slideshow up on the screen. <laughs> um, the first part is the water budget major drivers. There's a list of eight or ten bu uh, bullets there that outline some of the uh, increases and a few decreases. Some of that is insurance. Um, in, in the budget, um, a couple highlights, if I may, out of that. Um, line 146 is we're going to increase uh, by $21,000 the cost of replacing some of the, the innards or the guts of some of the large water meters in town. Um, and some of those are a few thousand dollars a piece, but they do generate a fair amount of revenue, so we want to make sure that those are uh, changed periodically. And then also we have to replace some of the older uh, Orion meters into the uh, cellular <coughs> base system. Um, line 92 is a kind of a, uh, one to point out too. Increase the electricity for, by 14,000. Not necessarily an increase in in uh, in use. It's uh, has to do with splitting the solar credit with the municipal building and Palmer Springs. Those credits are divvied up between the two um, meters. I guess is the best way to say that. Um, so, overall, we are looking at um, generating uh, $1,349,341 in revenue, and hence the same uh, expenses would be the same. So, I'm requesting you to approve the, the budget, and we can talk about the uh, rate issue. I'll make a motion to approve the FY19 water budget of $1,349,341. I'll second. Moved and seconded. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the, approving the budget, signify by saying aye. 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 Those, aye. Are, those opposed? Okay, for to raise those revenues, um, what we are 
proposing is a uh, increase in the base rate for um, in-town residents from, or in-town users, I should say, from $35.52 to $43.74. Um, we would also do the same, in, similar, similar increase for the out-of-town users, meaning those in Weybridge and New Haven. Um, their base would go up by uh, the same amount, so the out-of-town user rate would be $48.74. The user rate, which is what the per thousand rate is, would stay the same uh, for in-town users and would be $3.85 uh, $3.85 per thousand gallons for out-of-town users. So I'm requesting the board to approve that those rates for water. I'll make a motion, uh, motion to approve the FY water base rate of $43.74 for in-town users and a water base rate of seven, uh, excuse me, $48.74 for out-of-town users and a usage rate of $3.04 per thousand gallons for in-town users and $3.85 per thousand gallons for out-of-town users for FY19. One second. Seconded by Farhad. Any questions, comments? So this is consistent with our policy to keep up with revenue for water needed water projects it does not include uh, any increase in capital mm -hmm. but it does include in the drivers the the 30,000 for water repairs um, if you go back to the drivers um, I think it's uh, Line 128. 128. The 30,000 reflects increased number of costs and repairs. Um, it didn't really talk about capital, but there, there's not a specific increase in, in the water budget capital, but that will probably come as we get further down the line with, you know, big water repairs. Okay. So Does you that answer your question? Yep. Sort of. Sort of. Sorry, so I ask again. <laughs> so uh, also, the, we had an engineer in to help us with setting rates last year, and he had advised us to increase the water base rate to make that um, more of the revenue stream from uh, the users. And so that would be more consistent and predictable over time. And so that's what we did with this recommendation. Do you have more questions or? Nick, any questions? No, I don't have any questions. Okay. All in favor of approving the water rate proposal for FY19 signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, wastewater. Um, wastewater budget. Um, <coughs> Kathleen has a slide for major budget drivers. Uh, what we are intending to do is in, uh, raise enough revenues to fund the budget for $2,699,274. Um, some of the highlights for the drivers in the budget are uh, increases in wages, um, uh, a nice decrease in uh, benefits due to enrollment, a decrease in property and casualty insurance, um, some of the, excuse me, some of that is offset by some uh, operating supplies and maintenance of main uh, expenses. Um, you'll see on line 129, uh, purchase of cellular endpoints by $11,000. That matches a share or a number in the water budget we just talked about to uh, purchase some of those, those cellular meters uh, that uh, um, we want to try to get all of them replaced in, a, in about a four-year cycle. Um, and then um, capital improvements was increased by $143,000 to reflect anticipated revenues. Um, 
Slight decrease in uh, septage dumping receipts by 20,000 to reflect a trend in receipts since the price increase in, was instituted last year. So the, uh, <coughs> the capital improvement um, number was, be able, was one needed to be increased because of the you know, forthcoming CSO work that needs to be done. Um, we uh, have a, had the benefit of the negotiation the town did with Agrimark last year that uh, really drove some revenues for us for capital improvements. And combining with that, what I'm proposing if Kathleen would go to the rate, well, let's, let's, go, to the, let's go to the budget first if you want. Approve oh. the budget first and then I can talk about the rates. Yep. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the proposed fiscal year 19 wastewater budget of two million six hundred and ninety nine thousand two hundred and seventy four dollars and second moved and seconded any other questions all in favor of approving the FY 19 wastewater budget proposal signify by saying aye aye aye, aye. aye. those opposed mm -hmm. okay um, and so we looked at um, eliminating the uh, the minimum charge that goes on the, uh, the 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 sewer bill, similar to what we did last year with the water bill. <clears throat> it makes prediction of of revenues quite easy. Um, and so when you dec when you eliminate the minimum, you're you're going to capture more of that th those those first three thousand gallons which means you can do one or two or both of one of, of a thing here, and that is lower the base rate and also lower the user charge, uh, combined with the revenues that we saw or are seeing from the uh, agreement with Agmark on bringing them up to the rates that other, other residents and industries uh, pay. So um, doing the math, what it works out to is that the base rate would drop from $39.60 uh, to $29 per quarter. The minimum goes away. And then the usage rate would drop from $7.78 to $6.78 per thousand gallons. Nothing magical about the $1 drop, it just that's how the math worked, seemed to work out. So. Um, so that's the proposal for changing in the in the uh, in the sewer rate. Can you explain the this chart? Go to, if you can go to the current proposed chart. The, so if the rates drop, and why is the usage going up in this chart? Because you're getting the, you're capturing the first three thousand gallons of water usage where it was previously included in the base rate. Uh, So there's a point, there's two points on the graph where the lines fr from the current rate and the, this proposed rate cross. Some of the users below, those users below 1,500 gallons are going to see an over, overall drop in their combined rate of water and sewer. And somewhere around 20,000 gallon users, uh, those, those will see also a combined drop. That middle range where most of the users, users are will see, a, will see an increase. All depends on what you use, but. Okay. Questions? I'll make a motion to accept the infrastructure committee's recommendation. Whoops. Sorry, jumped ahead too far. Uh, make a motion to approve the in infrastructure committee's recommendation to reduce the minimum wastewater base rate from uh, $39.60 to $29 per quarter for FY19, <coughs> eliminate the minim minimum usage of 3,000 gallons per quarter, and reduce the usage rate uh, from $7.78 to $6.78 per thousand gallons. I'll second. Moved and seconded. Any questions? And all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. I want to jump back to one thing if I can and updates. I didn't talk about the tree committee initiative in Town Green. 
Um, they had some uh, work done with a, by a consultant on some of the trees in the green. There's approximately eight of them that are considered high risks, high risk, and dangerous. And so um, I have sent out a uh, request for bids from area tree removal contractors to take those down. The committee is going to mark them in the green. They are also going to do a, a fair amount of public relations to get that project out in the public so people are aware of it. But I want to just kind of uh, uh, put it out there right here as a, as a start. So you said eight trees? Eight. Wow. Actually, you'd be surprised how many trees are in the green and in Court Square. There are dozens and dozens. If you just hold, you can see. And then there's two on the, yeah. Thank uh, you. These uh, pictures are in the Infrastructure Committee packet, uh, if you want to take a look at those. OK, okay uh, next is uh, Merchants Row traffic plan. Um, Jen Murray uh, organized a, a, a brainstorm meeting with um, um, uh, Tom Hanley and Dave Shaw, is he still here? Uh -huh. And myself and Bill Kernan uh, talk about what we might consider for doing with the traffic, the traffic flow on Merchants Row. Um, and we concluded that we preferred to see a design developed um, with VHB's assistance to make traffic one-way eastbound flow, in other words, away from Main Street towards Soldiers, uh, the Soldier Monument. Um, the reasoning is it's pretty been well received so far with the bridge project. It works very efficiently. It certainly improves the safety uh, from the turning movements at Main Street and Merchants Row. Um, and it would certainly add some additional parking on, on uh, uh, the Merchants on Merchants Row along the park. Um, one of the things that happens when the bridge project is, is complete is the entrance and exit from Battelle Building is widened out because a tunnel goes further down south, down the railroad um, area, so the trucks can actually get out of that by having a better radius to turn. So um, what we're asking for is the uh, well, the Infrastructure Committee to endorse our recommendation that we retain Merchants Row as one way and eliminate the two-way traffic at the, at the east end. So it would be one way completely from Main Street to Soldiers Monument. Mm -hmm. And then um, that allows us to work with, your approval allows us to work with VHB to develop a more detailed plan for that process. So when you say it was well received, it's well received by who? Uh, is it like local business people or actor or who is it? Uh, I think it's it's a little bit of everything. Um, uh, some people have commented they like the one way. Um, uh, I haven't heard negative effects from, from businesses. Um, fire department but felt comfortable with it. I don't know if Dave, if you want to offer any comment. It's, or, it's much easier for us to get. Yeah, I, I did talk to a couple of business people in the past week and they seem to tell me that they're not comfortable with one where they're losing a lot of business. I think Merchants Row has been completely, especially the upper part of the Merchants Row, that has been completely segregated from the rest of downtown is what I hear from them. And uh, when, when you say they will receive them, I'm, I'm just questioning, is it from the staff perspective you're telling me, or is it the uh, actual business people who are telling you? Well, to uh, follow up on that, Farhad, Jim suggested that perhaps the board could have Aaron Guy at the end and have a public meeting on the um, yeah. one-way street proposal uh, before endorsing it. Yeah. We're not required to have a, a public meeting to, to well, change that? To, for a permanent change, you would have to amend the ordinance, so that would require a public meeting, but I don't see that as being immediate. So is that what we're asking for? We're not, we're not asking you to, to make Merchants Row one way. We're asking you to, uh, and I guess, in, endorse the staff recommendation that we go talk to VHB so they can develop uh, 
some ideas or solution on what this will look like and what it means so you can have that discussion. I think before endorsing, I, I would like to hear the opinion of everybody else. Uh, because from what I, I, I met with at least one business person today and they seem very distressed about having it one way and how much money they're losing because of that. Because of it being one way? Yes. Mm. I, don't, I don't know if I agree with them, but yeah. that's their. Okay. Well, I think if we, if we support this though and we'll have more information because if we have, I would like more information to offer people, and I feel and like the plans would. Right, that's what would, we're trying to right. have happen. Like mm -hmm. when we have that conversation, people are gonna ask some questions that can be answered if we have the plans. I, I don't know if I'm in a position to, s uh, endorsing means I'm supporting it, right? So I don't know if I'm in a position to do that. Uh, Maybe, maybe I didn't have a good choice of words, but we're asking uh, is your... To follow a process follow to review it? To have VHB Less develop plans in, in further detail so we can have a discussion. Yeah. That I'll agree with, yeah. Um, I mean, you, well, may come, I you may come to this and say, ah, this doesn't work, but we can't... Well, this was an option that was talked about that they threw out some time ago, so it's not new. Right. Uh, oh, it's, and I, it's old. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I still remember. Um, I, I've always been opposed to cars pulling out of Merchants Row, heading heading west, because I mean, there was a person killed one time coming crossing the street. It, it's a fairly dangerous. Uh, I mean, if you're looking for danger spot, I'm wondering. I think what would help if, if um, as you've been talking about, it would be, I'm, I assume, a wide single lane going, going east, um, that it would be an opportunity to um, widen the sidewalks, I mean, there'd be some parking, but I'm, I'm thinking that um, Merchants Row is a kind of promenade, I mean, in other words, that, and, and we're talking about trying to improve the downtown retail, that if you have space, um, sidewalk space, I think, if it could be in, increased, and, and I, I suspect that this would open. So I'm, I'm hoping that if, if in the planning, um, the redesigning, that those options would be explored so that we could see what you know, what, what exactly it promises, if it promises anything, but I mean, I think that. So could you make a motion to support exploring that option? Yeah. I think that's what Dan's looking for. And, yeah. and, and I think we can, at least if we had a motion that was, that clarified what he's asking for, then we can talk to that, that motion. I'd like to add something to that as a consideration, which is really the actor bus stop for the future, because that had been a critical spot for stopping, and I think that the plan should consider the future of that stop on Merchants Row. You know, is it? And if it is, you know, where would it go? And I know that um, we've seen some renditions, you know, like that would keep this one way and potentially give actor a, a birth, a protected birth, and still provide all this additional parking. And that could be an interesting configuration to see also as they're designing things. To Victor's point, like a, prom a promenade. So we had this visioning exercise for Triangle Park and, and Printer's Alley, and I kind of see this in the same way. I think maybe Kathleen or Jim, if I can ask your help on this one. I believe that that a bus stop cannot be designed in this project because of the permit process. Jim, do you? We talked about it early on, and they, they won't allow us onto that, um, onto think? the tunnel. So it was something to do, because we had wanted to put the bus stop out over the. 
remember that, oh, Kathleen? Yes, well, it, I think what Laura's talking about is there's a proposal that's curly, currently circulating in public to have a slip lane uh, right beside <coughs> the uh, town green um, and so. configure around uh, parking around that. Uh, I think it would encroach slightly on the green, which would be a concern uh, in the um, historic preservation um, route, but th that, that's Laura's concern that we consider the um, actor bus stop. Um, that said, I do think that that's a, could be a potentially lengthy discussion and Aaron is eager to wrap up um, construction plans this fall, I understood, so. I think he's under like a 30 day, roughly a 30 day mm -hmm. period to try to finalize plans. The other thing to add is that you know, the state has relocated actor uh, off of Persons Road in a Kennedy Street and will not pay to re relocate them again. So that's another piece of this as well. So can I just, so my understanding from Jennifer at Infrastructure Committee the other day was that this proposal would be the final plan for that street. That this is the, what we're suggesting to them is what they're gonna plan as the final plan because right. I had some comments to an infrastructure committee and my understanding was that that those kind of conversations had to happen as part of a downtown master planning and not as part of this project. So has that changed or is that still? I think you're still correct with that. So I'm not sure that the motion to suggest that we explore it is, is in line with what I understood from last week. Correct. Like I think if we endorse this, this is how they're gonna design the construction plans for what the project will look like when it's done. And if we want to make changes to uh, bus parking, sidewalk width, that might be on the town's, on the town's dollar. And this Correct. is coming to us awfully late because if we were going to change it to a one way, we should have been talking about this in time to have public input. This is, that's. Yes, I, that was my thought that it was coming pretty quick. So but we, but the we, motion you talked about was to explore um, the concept of a one way uh, further. Um, and Laura talked about adding something about an actor bus stop. And you we haven't got a, we haven't got a motion in a second yet. So right, but that <laughs> I was, was looking just for, the, for yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for explore. a motion. <laughs> Is this? I guess I just wanted to be clear that it sounds like we're asking for them to maybe explore planning for this. But my understanding the other day was that we're giving them permission to design the final plans like this. So I guess I just. You can, I want you, to be clear on what my understanding was the other day and what we're talking about now. So, I guess my, my sense is that um, by, by exploring, it would be coming up with a plan that we may say, this is it. Uh, and, and, and that's the final. I mean, obviously, to a certain extent, we have a recommendation that we endorse making Merchant's Row one way. I mean, I, I'm, I've been in favor of that for years, so I have no problem with that. But it does seem to me that we're going through this project of rebuilding Merchant's Row in the downtown, and this is a time to plan it and, and I, uh, uh, to see, and, and, and then to see what it would look like. And, and, and uh, I, you know, I, I can envision something, but I'm not a, uh, uh, streetscape architect, I mean, but, but, but it, it would seem to me that um, uh, we would, to see, to explore, what could be done, and, and, and that means come up with some kind of a, of a plan that, that shows how the space would be used, uh, and uh, we're, we're going to go through this long project of rebuilding this area, so, so this is an opportunity, I think, to um, <coughs> to do something that we may all find 
really looks terrific, or maybe not. I mean, I. I Dan, can we clarify it one more time, and then I'd like to get a motion and move forward. We're going to be here all night at this rate. Um, the issue that what you're asking for is basically for him to give us a a design that we could compare with the, what he's already given us for the design for two-way, and we would have two designs, and we could have. If he could have that done for our next meeting, we could have mm -hmm. public input at that meeting and provide him. He needs within 30 days, he needs a decision whether we're going to go with two-way or one-way. Is that is that what you're saying? Or when we get him to do an initial design, he's going to continue that way is kind of what I'm hearing from Heather. Which, which one is it? I, I believe that you can always go back to two-way, uh, but there's a point where, I mean, initially this, this deadline was the end of June. And so we said, whoa, you know, we need, I think it was the point where Aaron got to us to a point where, okay, I need input from the town. Where are we going with Merchants Row? So we said, all right, let's talk about it as staff and have a conversation. And staff felt that one way seemed to be the best idea. So Aaron can take that recommendation, your recommendation to let's explore that let's see what it looks like yeah we have to figure out the turning radiuses for those coming out of Battelle mm -hmm. block maybe this doesn't maybe it doesn't work but uh it from the guts from the people involved say yeah it will and then um you can see on here that we could we would increase the increase the parking the, the driving travel lane would become narrower and we get more parking spaces along along merchants row um, there will be further discussion on which way are those angle parking spots facing, you know. Um, so there's some things that would need to be tweaked. But this is a time where he says, I'm ready for you guys to come to me and say, what do you want to look at? Let's look at it. Now is the time. And so yeah. that's what we're trying to, to, to have them do. Okay. Would you be willing to make a, a motion? Hmm? Would you be willing to make that motion, please? <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's see, um, so it would be, a, 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 um, forget the one that's written. I think what we want is a, hmm? what we can come to agreement on is that we're willing to explore, to explore a one way the, option for right, right. Merchants Row. Right. And, and to come back with a, uh, with a sketch of, of conceptual design of, of, of how it would look, um, I suppose. So, um, so, uh, so we're really turning it back to you to um, to explore this option. That is to say, if we make Merchants Row one way, um, and to provide a conceptual plan of of, of 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 how it would how it would work, is that? And I and I think the the. Is that okay? Yeah, mm -hmm. and the and the the end of it is for further review, because yeah. we all want to have a, a look at it. Yeah. Good. I didn't quite get your last sentence. I said I said we all we want we all want to have a look at it. So develop it, bring it back. Let's take a seat, right. take a look, see. And yeah. I would by by the next meeting. I don't know. I can. I, I don't know if that timeline is realistic, or a maybe month? the second meeting in July. Uh, we would be able to take a look at that. But let's get a good timeline on that so we can get the public uh, notice out on when it's going to be. I'll second. <laughs> Got a motion and a second. Enough, so it won't delay the project. I mean, I think this is. I don't think it's going to delay the project. Okay. No, no. They, they would just like to get it done, but they're. That is not going to hold the project up. <laughs> okay. All in favor of exploring of, of uh, exploring one-way traffic on Merchants Row uh, through receiving a graphic depiction that we can engage the public on in a public in an open dialogue, signified by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Okay. Okay. Next item is. Um, approving uh, a proposal from J&B International <coughs> to replace 
a uh, motor in a, uh, our truck 356, which is an international 2012. Um, I think you have uh, items in your packet from Bill uh, spelling out what was needed, but the, the motor has uh, suffered, or the engine has compl uh, suffered complete failure. Um, briefly, uh, some years ago, back around 2012, when the federal government was uh, ratcheting up some emission issues, um, uh, manufacturers were scrambling to come up with solutions to those emissions. And uh, some, of the, some of the manufacturers bailed out of manufacturing trucks in this size. Um, International did not, but unfortunately, I think, I shouldn't say, I think they understand that they have a problem with this motor and, 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 and failures are, are kind of frequent. So, of course, it's out of warranty, um, but uh, Bill is trying to work with, through the through JNB to see if there's something that International can do since they understand that they have a, a motor problem. But for right now, we need to get the truck fixed. And uh, Bill got two prices from uh, two of the local vendors here in Vermont. One is JNB International. The other is from Clark Truck Center. They're up in Jericho. And the Infrastructure Committee uh, recommended to Request the board to approve a bid from JNB International for twenty-six thousand seventeen dollars and fifteen cents. Requesting that approval. Any questions? Pleasure of the board. I'll make a motion to endorse the infrastructure committee's recommendation to award a contract to JNB International for the replacement of the engine for truck 356 for a total of $26,017.15, including Second. labor to install. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Aye. Yeah, <laughs> it's a big engine. Mm -hmm. Next item is um, just to uh, assign a letter of intent uh, to participate in the Municipal uh, Roads Grant and Aids Program. This is the second year of the program. The uh, Department of, en of Environmental Conservation runs it through, uh, through the local regional planning commissions. Um, it is to promote best management practices on what are called hydraulically, hydrologically sorry, connected municipal roads. Um, and so we would need your signatures on a letter of intent to pursue that with or through um, Addison Regional Planning Commission. Um, Middlebury has, according to their chart, between 35 and 40, 40 miles of roads connected hydrologically. So we would have to have a $3,850 $3, dollar grant or cash or matching kind. And um, the grant would be 15,400 for a total project worth 19,250. I'll make a motion uh, to sign the letter of intent to participate in the 2018-2019 Municipal Roads Grant and Aid Program. I'll second it. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. What I'd like to try and, uh, on that particular one, when does the letter have to be uh, sent in? What is the uh, signatures? Bill? The so sorry. as the deadline was the 22nd, I had already contacted the uh, Regional Planning Commission and told them that we were interested in um, pursuing this and uh, we have been accepted into the program pending your receipt of this. Okay, so as soon as you get back, Nick. Well, what I was just saying is sooner I, I uh, certainly uh, authorize Kathleen to sign for me. Okay. Thank you, Nick. There's, there's. Uh, I've printed your name on the form, so they'll be able to. They'll know who assigned it, Nick. Okay, last item is uh, the town clock, which is on the congreg congregational church steeple. Um, 
I got word last week that the Congo Church is going to contract Yankee Tower to repaint uh, uh, the upper areas of the church steeple. And if you notice today, there's some ladders on the, on the north side that have been erected up at the top. It's quite interesting. Um, so the, uh, uh, through the church, they Thank connected you. me with Yankee Tower. Um, and they quoted me a price of $3,200 to paint the four black faces of the clock. Um, I took a look at it with my, with my binoculars. The south side is, is getting a little tired. That's where most of the sun beats on that black face. So it would be worth doing that. And of course, it would be cheaper to do it now since the crew is already there than, than at any point in the future. So I'm asking the board to approve $3,200 to Yankee Tower to do that work. I'll move that. I'll second. Moved and seconded. Any questions, comments? So the, 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 we own just the clock part, and the church owns the building. Is that how it is? The gold, the gold let, uh, numbers and hands are, are, are gold leaf, so they're okay. It's just that black circle. The Face town owns the clock. The town <laughs> owns the clock. <laughs> okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? That is it. Thank you. Thank you. So, is this? Okay. So, as you may recall, back a couple of months ago, you approved a request for a planning advance loan for the water system um, upgrades that we're contemplating. And this declaration that you're about to sign will allow us to uh, be reimbursed from the construction loan from the project. And this was recommended by our bond council. That's where that came up, bond council? Yep. Okay. <laughs> I'll make a motion to adopt the declaration of official intent of the town of Middlebury to reimburse certain expenditures from proceed, proceeds of indebtedness. Did I say that right? And authorize town clerk Ann Webster to sign the declaration certification. I'll second it. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. So we're now we're looking at the downtown improvement district budget for FY19, and um, on June 5th, the downtown improvement district approved a FY19 budget of $34,183 to recommend to the select board. The budget approved by the DIDC is based on a tax rate of seven cents per $100 valuation, the same tax rate as FY17 as the downtown improvement district was not reauthorized until November of last year, well after the FY18 tax bills had been sent. The downtown improvement district tax rate is capped at 10 cents per $100. Per DC budgeted expenses, including a 15% allocation to the Better Middlebury Partnership, a 10% maintenance allocation for previous projects, $3,800 of the remaining matching funds for the USDA grant and $10,000 towards the BMP marketing position, bringing total expenses to $22,406. As detailed in the budget worksheet included in the packet, the DIDC has not included any special projects in the budget for FY19. So there, we need to approve the DIDC budget, and then we will address the tax rate. I'll move that we approve that uh, budget of $34,183. One second. Are there any questions? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the DIDC budget, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. And pleasure of the board on the tax rate of seven cents per one hundred dollars. 
I'll move that too. Um, that we set the DI D C tax rate for the 2019 fiscal year at seven cents per 100 for the assessed value of commercial properties in the district. On second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Thank you, businesses. Property owners. So uh, now we need to set the municipal tax rate for FY19. On March 5th, voters approved the general fund operating budget of $10,547,426 for FY19 with $7,331,905 to be raised by taxes. The voters also approved the use of $57,484 from the Cross Street Bridge Fund surplus to offset the increase in capital expenditures for FY19, reducing the amount to be raised to $7,274,421. Additionally, several years ago, the town raised the veterans exemption from $10,000 to $40,000 of assessed value. As Middlebury taxpayers are responsible for the education property taxes on the increased exempt value, that amount is also added to the tax rate and is listed separately. The fiscal year 2019 grand list as determined by the town listers is $7,561,074. The grand list is the total value of taxable property, property divided by 100. The tax rate is set by dividing the dollar amounts to be raised by the grand list value. The resulting tax rate is expressed per $100 of property value. The total municipal tax rate for FY19 under consideration by the board, including the amount required to support the general fund budget after deducting the use of the Cross Street Bridge Fund surplus, offset the education property taxes for veterans exemptions and raised two cents on the tax rate for the fire fund is 98.36 cents, an increase of 14 one thousandths of a cent over FY18's tax rate, or that's 14 one hundredths of a cent, I'm sorry, over FY18's tax rate of 98.22 cents. Education property tax rates, the state issues tax rates for education property taxes on or about June 30th each year, which would just they'll be coming out now that we have an approved budget. To note that the budget uh, was just, the governor just indicated that he's going to allow the, the latest rendition of the budget to go into law. Since we traditionally send one tax bill for both municipal and school property taxes, we're awaiting the final guidance on that tax bill. We can, though, approve the municipal tax rate tonight. So I'll be seeking a motion to approve the municipal tax rate that came about from our budgeting. I'll make a motion to approve the municipal tax rate for 2019 fiscal year at 0 0.9836 per $100 of assessed value. I'll second. second. Sorry. Okay. Go second ahead. Over here. Second. Nobody's fighting through. <laughs> Moved and seconded. So all in favor of approving our municipal tax rate signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, and then I believe Ann will have what she needs shortly from the state so that we can actually do our taxes. So once the select board approves uh, the tax rate, we have eager taxpayers calling us as to when they're gonna get their tax bills. The tax <coughs> bills will be sent by July 30th because the first installments are due August 15th. So, so our tax will go up like a penny for every hundred uh, Less than a penny. Point one four cents. About a penny, yeah. About a tenth of a penny, yeah. yeah. About a tenth of a penny. Fourteen one hundredths. Fourteen. 
So you're saying the statements will go out by July 30th? 13th. 13th. Okay. <clears throat> Kathleen, would you care to walk us through the sublicense agreement? So, as you know, with the new tower, uh, we have um, several tenants, if you will, on the tower, which is managed by Verizon Wireless. New Singular Wireless would like to add some new equipment to the tower, and right now they're currently on the old tower, which is why the old tower is still there. So in order to transfer to the new tower, they need a sign-off from the town. And the town has asked for uh, some information, some assurance that there isn't going to be any interference by the new equipment with our existing users. And that's what we're waiting for. Once we get that resolved, we will be clear to go ahead and sign this. Knowing that we're eager to get that tower down, I'd ask the board to give me approval to assign the agreement, which will provide an additional $13,200 of revenue uh, to the town for um, the, which will be turned over to the Patel trustees and eventually flows back into the land use the land conservation trust fund uh, through a contribution there uh, but if the board would approve uh, my signature of this once uh, the fine points are resolved I would appreciate it I'm happy to answer any questions you have is that singular is that AT&T or something else it, it's AT&T yep and then we'll decommission the other tower and Pleasure of the board. For that? I'm sorry. Uh, Verizon will right. take care okay. of that. I'll make a motion to authorize town manager Kathleen Ramsey to sign the fourth amendment to the sub license agreement between Verizon Wireless and New Singular Wireless PCS for the new Chipman Hill Tower pending final review by town council. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, check warrants. Um, I would motion to approve total expenditures in the amount of $405,896.63, consisting of $298,081.60 for accounts payable and $107,815.03 for payroll for the period of June 13th 2018, 2018 through June 26th, 2018. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Town manager's report. Just a couple of things uh, to note that the Exchange Street Bike and Pedestrian Program grant application was submitted on Friday. It's in your packet and we thank uh, so many organizations for coming forward with their letters of support for the application. Um, it was good to note that they were all eager to submit uh, letters of support for that. Um, also pursuant to uh, notification required under Act 56, an act relating to professional regulation of law enforcement officers by the Vermont Criminal Justice Training Council, uh, Police Chief Tom, Tom Hanley has designated the Select Board um, as, its, as the town's civilian review pa panel regarding any discipline to a police officer uh, upon a finding that uh, they have engaged in certain unprofessional contact and conduct. Um, you will be notified and uh, determine whether the uh, disciplinary action recommended by the chief is appropriate. Um, the chief uh, went ahead and notified the Criminal Justice Training Council of that uh, designation, which can be changed at any time. <clears throat> and then uh, there, we, there was also a public input meeting on the rail platform siting study uh, held here last week with more than 40 people attending. Uh, the final report in the study of siting alternatives which will be presented to the select board for approval in October will identify a locally preferred alternative and cost estimate for the platform location with design work to be performed at a later date. There will be a couple more um, public hearings uh, on that 
uh, study. But we don't know their dates yet, I guess. Okay. And that's all I have. <coughs> okay, thank you, Kathleen. <coughs> Board member concerns. Victor. pleased with the grant application for um, bike ped I was really impressed with the number of letters of support from the Exchange Street businesses and organizations and you know to Angelo's editorial point you know I think we do have a robust future before us in building out our our biking and walking network so I look forward to that being developed on Exchange Street. So that was good. And um, I'm also uh, very grateful for the Rotary's work with flags and display. And I'm aware that there was an issue with a defacement of one of, not one of our flags, but a flag at the Case Street Community House with um, graffiti again, hate graffiti, and I know that we're not a community that supports hate language, and I hope that we can encourage civil displays of our opinions and, and avoid that kind of hate display <clears throat> that's it Heather uh, I would just like to remind uh, anyone interested that tomorrow night is the first um, movie in the park and uh, the movie Ferdinand is showing at dusk and it's a great opportunity even though there's not a block party to come downtown and support the businesses and um, watch a movie as a community. So um, it didn't get mentioned earlier, so I thought I would bring it up. Okay. Uh, I would like to echo Laura's comment about vandalism and graffiti, which we should all condemn uh, with all our hearts. Um, there was another letter in, in the Front Watch Forum that somebody were uh, stealing uh, flags and flowers from grave sites which is deplorable in my opinion. Um, it, it hits home if it, if it happens to you. And I had an incident happen a couple days ago, a very racist, bigot. Um, so we all know uh, there's no place for that in our society. And I appreciate you bringing that up. Nick? I don't have anything else to make right OK. All right. Um, I think we had some really good discussion this evening on, on some of the uh, thoughts about the downtown, and I, I um, wanted to kind of move the, we have an executive session, so I wanted to move the discussion, but I think it's, that's, I'm hoping that we have a, a good showing when we get to the point where we have uh, um, public input for us to consider, because uh, that's something that's been discussed for a while, uh, changing merchants uh, to a one-way street, and certainly it provides another option that we should talk about in time. So uh, thank you for endorsing, at least pursuing that discussion. I appreciate that. I'm not sure where I stand on it. I just want to, I think we, we owe to, to in, support uh, our staff when they bring something forward to at least allow them to engage and, and bring us alternative solutions. So that, that was, I think, the right thing to do. So uh, with that, we need to go into executive session for contract negotiation. In accordance with Vermont's open meeting law requirements, I move that the board find that the premature general knowledge of the consideration of a pending contract negotiation would clearly place the select board at a substantial disadvantage because the select board risks disclosing its litigation strategy if it discusses the pending contract negotiation in public. Second. 
Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I further move that the board enter into executive session to discuss the pending contract negotiation under the, under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A1 of the Vermont Statutes. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. So we're going into executive session at 855.